Who were the first people to reach the Americas? When did they get there, and how? These are among the most mysterious questions in prehistory, and have long been studied using traditional archaeology, bones, artifacts and so on. In recent years, however, the field has been revolutionized by genetic data. DNA from living people and preserved remains has both enhanced and transformed our understanding of the continent's first peoples, those who were on the continent before Europeans arrived, and how they got there. Archaeologists were convinced that the first people in the Americas were the Clovis, who made a distinctive kind of stone tool. This idea became dogma, and any archaeological sites that seemed older than the Clovis were dismissed, often on flimsy grounds. Only in the past decade or so has pre-Clovis settlement become accepted. Then there is the question of how the first peoples got there. All the evidence suggests that they came from Asia, but there is an open question over the route they took. The evidence is complex and contradictory. The story of how humans got to the Americas isn't a simple one. The New World wasn't conquered by a single group of people. Different populations migrated and interbred in a tangled web. This is the new normal for human evolution. Clovis I was once the rallying call of archaeologists studying humanity's settlement of the Americas. It referred to the idea that the prehistoric people who made the distinctive Clovis bone and ivory tools must have been the first human to enter the New World, about 13,000 years ago. Now we know better. Like much of the received wisdom about human evolution, the peopling of the Americas has been subject to revision in recent years. New discoveries leave no doubt that people arrived earlier than 13,000 years ago, possibly far earlier. Some of the evidence for occupation is still hotly contested. Who the pioneers were is also proving difficult to pin down. However, there seems little doubt that they entered the last continental landmass to be inhabited by humans from the north. They came via Beringia, an area centered on the Bering Strait between Siberia and Alaska. These people also didn't simply migrate through this subarctic region. They took up residence there and became isolated from the rest of humanity for thousands of years, as the world was plunged into an icy period. These were the first people known to inhabit subarctic regions. We are now starting to piece together the story of how they survived in this harsh environment, and how that experience shaped them genetically and physically. Intriguingly, we can track some of their genetic adaptations right down into Central and South America where they could explain puzzling anomalies found in ancient human remains and among modern indigenous Americans. Clovis I has now been comprehensively refuted and a new picture is emerging. The conquest of the New World didn't entail a single group of people marching from north to south. There were different populations, ebbing and flowing and interbreeding. In other words, it is complicated. But that is the new normal when it comes to human evolution and it will continue to be so. Moreover, a genealogy of humans constructed from thousands of genomes gives us clues about where our species first evolved and how we spread across the world. In a recent study published in a science titled, A Unified Genealogy of Modern and Ancient Genomes, researchers from Harvard and MIT blow most estimates of when humans got to the Americas out of the water. This image visualizes inferred human ancestral lineages over time and space. Each line represents an ancestor-descendant relationship in our inferred genealogy of modern and ancient genomes. The width of a line corresponds to how many times the relationship is observed, and lines are colored on the basis of the estimated age of the ancestor. In fact, a family tree of humanity has been constructed using genetic data from thousands of modern and prehistoric people. The tree gives a view of two million years of prehistory and evolution. Humans are all ultimately related to each other. The new family tree suggests that our earliest roots were in northeast Africa. It also offers clues that people reached Papua New Guinea and the Americas tens of thousands of years earlier than the archaeological record implies, hinting at early migrations that haven't yet been discovered. However, both these ideas would need to be confirmed by archaeologists. Geneticists have been reading people's entire genomes for the past two decades. Geneticists compiled 3,609 complete genomes, 
almost all of which belong to our species, Homo sapiens, except for three Neanderthals and one from the Denisovan group, which may be a subspecies of Homo sapiens or a separate species. Putting them together into a tree was challenging. The different data sets have been produced over time, using different technologies, analyzed in different ways. The team focused on bits of DNA that vary from person to person. They identified 6,412,717 variants and tried to figure out when and where each one arose. To do this, they also looked at an additional 3,589 samples of ancient DNA that weren't good enough to include in the tree, but did shed light on when the variants emerged. Variants that emerged before 72,000 years ago were most common in Northeast Africa, and the oldest 100 variants were also from there, specifically in what is now Sudan. Those oldest variants are about 2 million years old, so they long predate our species, which emerged around 300,000 years ago. Instead, the variants date to the earliest members of our genus, Homo. The simplistic interpretation of this is that humanity first evolved in that region, but it is likely that subsequent migrations have interfered with the data. The earliest Homo sapiens fossils are from the north and east of Africa, but few have been discovered, so we don't know our species' early range with any certainty. The oldest known specimens are from Jebel Erhoud in Morocco, in North Africa, and are perhaps 315,000 years old. The next oldest are those from Omo Kaibish in Ethiopia, in the east. They were thought to be 197,000 years old, but a paper published in January presented evidence that they are more like 233,000 years old. Many anthropologists now think there were multiple populations spread across Africa, which were sometimes separated and sometimes interbred. If that is correct, humanity doesn't have a central origin point. The findings are certainly perfectly compatible with that. There's a lot of very deep lineages within Africa, which are suggestive of that notion of there being multiple source populations, very deeply diverged, representing really ancient splits. In line with this, a second study obtained ancient DNA from six sub-Saharan African people who lived within the past 18,000 years. They carried DNA from three distinct lineages that originated in the distant past, from Eastern, Central and Southern Africa. These groups began interbreeding more around 50,000 years ago, but by 20,000 years ago this largely stopped. The new genealogy also contains hints of early journeys. It suggests that people were living in Papua New Guinea 140,000 years ago, almost 100,000 years before the earliest documented inhabitants. Similarly, it indicates that people were in the Americas 56,000 years ago despite many archaeologists having settled on 18,000 years ago as the earliest entrance. The idea of people in the Americas earlier than this is controversial because, prior to that, great ice sheets covered the northern regions, blocking migration. Nevertheless, a study from September 2021 described footprints from White Sands National Park in New Mexico, which suggest humans were in the Americas between 23,000 and 21,000 years ago. There is also disputed evidence of humans living in Chiquihuite Cave in Mexico as much as 33,000 years ago. But 56,000 years ago is still a big reach. There are two possible explanations. One is that people really were in these places very early. The second option is a more complex scenario. The first people to live in the Americas came from Eastern Asia, and it may be that the population from which they came has died out in Asia. This would mean the oldest American-looking genetic variants are actually from people who lived in Asia, but the only living people with those variants today are in America, throwing off the analysis. A similar story could have played out for Papua New Guinea. It's very common in genetic data that there are ancient lineages which don't persist throughout time, so that's completely plausible. 